and too much of sugar is toxic, they die. Due to various complications, body starts eating the protein and fat. That is known as a ketoacidosis. It's a technical condition, a medical condition of ketoacidosis. They become lean, massy, etc. Then they pop off. Unless you give insulin. Once you give insulin, it is able to work, transport the sugar. So, this is the oxymoron. You have type 1, you give insulin, because there is no insulin. In type 2, you have too much insulin, you give insulin. <laughs> That's a stupidity. That's what I will elaborate to you. Okay. So, so, this is how you treat diabetes. Third one is hypertension. Whenever you have high insulin in your body, there is a complementary retention of sodium and water. Okay, so the pressure will go on. Two, when you have high insulin, it is toxic to the blood vessel. It starts narrowing. One, there is a narrowing, the muscles of the blood vessel go into spasm, they narrow. Two, the insulin causes damage to the inner lining, instead of the endothelium. This is the inner lining, huh? it's smooth as this wall. However, the insulin is high, it causes damage. Once the damage is caused, the body recruits cholesterol and puts a patch here. Over a period of time, it narrows. So imagine water flow flowing through a white mouth tube and a narrow mouth tube, which is got more pressure. Suppose you have a machine, a uh, motor pumping water through it, which has got to put more power. So the pressure has got to go up. So what? That is one. Next thing, you take water. Water. How you take water and sugar solution, which is the gel. So suppose it is being water is being propelled in a machine. Sugar, sugar solution being propelled in a machine. Which machine exerts more pressure? Sugar. Sugar solution. So in a diabetic, don't you think he or she has got more sugar? Don't you think the blood is more thicker? Don't you think the elevation of pressure is vaginal? Mm -hmm. So how do you treat that? How do you treat that? Yes. Get the insulin down. How do you get the insulin down? Okay. About the fourth thing is uh, lipid disorders. Lipid disorder, whenever you look at the lipid profile, you have usually four things. Total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglyceride. Four things. Okay. So when you look at the, the only thing, please remember the only thing you have to look in the lipid profile is the ratio of triglyceride, aka fat. Triglyceride is fat. Another name for triglyceride is fat. Triglyceride by HDL. That high density lipoprotein should be less than 3 or 3 and a half. If this is there, your lipid profile is perfect. You don't have to worry. Okay, having high cholesterol, it's not a problem. High cholesterol, where is cholesterol being produced? By the liver. 80% of the cholesterol is being produced by the liver. 20% from the food. If you don't take from the food, the body will produce an extra cholesterol. Okay. So you know if the body is so supremely intelligent, it produces the cholesterol. What does cholesterol do? It helps in healing. And every living organism has got cholesterol. Every living cell has got a cholesterol. Cholesterol is equal to life. Giving a cholesterol lowering medicine is the most idiotic thing I've talked to It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So that's the problem with cholesterol. So, so you don't have to treat the cholesterol. You have to treat the triglyceride to HDL ratio has got to be corrected. Okay. Triglyceride is fat. Okay. What causes the fat? Through which medium? What, what is the base material for insulin to convert into fat? <laughs> so, how do you treat high triglyceride? Reduce the power, right? Increase the fat, 
and go for intermediate fast. <laughs> so four things. Then the final uh, uh, the other problem is uh, uh, another important hormone no, which plays a huge part is thyroid. See thyroid problem. If you have 100 people with thyroid issues, 80 percent women. Out of which 80% is under functioning thyroid, out of which 80% is autoimmune thyroid, known as Hashimoto's. Okay, so first I will explain about uh, this thyroid. See, in our body, we are run by automatic nervous system. Technically, we call it autonomic nervous system. There are a number of functions that are taking place in our body without our volition. This is controlled by the autonomic system, it's got two branches. Okay, one is sympathetic, another one is parasympathetic. Sympathetic means for any fight or flight. The dog is chasing you, either fight or run away. Okay, there the sympathetic system is activated. It is also known as the adrenal system. Adrenal means above the kidney. Okay, above the kidney there is an adrenal gland which secretes the hormone necessary to fight the Stressful situation. Okay, so cortisol, catecholamine, noradrenaline, etc., etc. So that is the sympathetic system. The opposite of this is the parasympathetic system that is activated when you are sleeping, when you are digesting, when you are resting. Okay, it is also known as a thyroid system. Okay, so you have an adrenal system, you have thyroid system. So it is like uh, putting the cruise mode on the brake. You cannot use both at the same time. When one is dominant, the other one is suppressed. So when you are sympathetically dominant, so adrenal dominance, and there is adrenal dominance, there is thyroid suppression. So one of the commonest causes for thyroid doing dysfunction is stress. So tell me who is in stress, right from children to adults. <laughs> Okay, generally women are stressed more due to the by nature. Okay, this is, I don't mean anything bad about it. Okay, so that is why you see more. So how do you die? See, if you don't sleep properly, you are stressed. You need bad food, you are stressed. Your stress is going to Okay, so a number of things. So this is how stress causes. The next thing is autoimmune. Autoimmune is a huge problem. Autoimmunity means our own defense mechanism is destroying our body. Okay. So anything foreign enters your body, well, the immune system attacks and that's the way it. That's fine. However, there's a situation arising. When the body's own immune system is attacking, then it's a huge problem. So for an autoimmune disorder, I have an autoimmune disorder. This is why my color is gone. I will explain it. For any autoimmune disorder to occur, there are three prerequisites. One, genetic susceptibility. Okay. Our genes, you can imagine our genes like a chain with multiple weak links. My weak link is one diabetes, cancer, skin disorder, these are all my weak links. When you keep this uh, chain lax, nothing happens. What happens when you put a stretch on that? What happens? It's you wait. So what puts the stretch is our lifestyle, our environment, food that we have. So that is a, the stretching. Genetic susceptibility is the first prerequisite. Second is the environmental stretch. The third prerequisite without which no autoimmune disorder will occur is known as a leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability. So what is it all? It's a jargon. What it, what it means is that our intestine, which is about 20 to 25 feet, okay, does not allow anything bad to get into our system. Our body is extremely brilliant. The inner lining is lined by a single layer of cell, the thickness of which is half the width of a human hair strand. The area is a double stereoscope. 
and there is no gap between the cells. You can imagine a tube without any gap like this. And 80% of the immune system is around this. Sitting calm and quiet when there when there's when they, when there's no leaking. When the cells are proper, there's no gap, nothing leaks, it's quiet. However, when you blow holes in this, right? Lifestyle, environment, the food that we take, all sorts of things will leak into our system. Once it leaks, the immune system is alarmed. Okay, so it's going to fight it out. If in the unfortunate event, like in my case, my skin pigment protein and the protein that is leaked into my system are sort of similar, the immune system attacks this. So if my immune, if my autoimmune disorder starts today, for me to manifest a symptom like a patch, it takes 10 to 15 years. So if in the unfortunate event of a person's thyroid protein or gland in some way resembles something that is leaking, it's a collateral damage. Okay, different things can leak. So that is why autoimmune disorders are multiple. But you can have psoriasis, it's a skin condition, not a They can have arthritis, joint pains. So I think the number of even diabetes, you can get type 1 diabetes. Because all the leaks and then the immune system is alarm, you can destroy your beta cells, you can go for type 1. Completely gone. So you can get any autoimmune disease and then you will have a bunch of autoimmune disorders. So how do you treat it? Plugging this leak. How do you plug the leak? See, the first thing, the genetic propensity cannot be altered. It's a deck of cards you've been dealt. You can't do anything about it. What you can do, change your lifestyle, your environment, the food that you take, enabling, that will be plugging this. Once you plug this gap, you are restoring the integrity of the intestine with that. Nothing leaks out. You are calming the immune system, then the healing process takes. Because every living organism is self-healing and self-regulating. So this is how you address thyroid. Other thyroid, other problems is that you have what is known as endocrine disruptors. Okay. So I told you know cells have what is receptor for the thyroid hormone. Okay. They have receptor for thyroid hormone. Uh, like the ball and the socket. The socket is here, goes and sits. The thyroid. There are certain uh, stuffs, certain things that we use which closely resembles the thyroid protein. Okay. They will go preferentially sit the sockets and your thyroid will not function. So, what are they? For example, hair day, hair color, shampoo, lipstick. Eyeliner, soap, powder, nail polish, the water that comes in a plastic container. In India, that's what you drink. It comes in a bubble top. So, bubble top contains a plastic known as bisphenol A. So, how is it brought? It is brought in a van, in an open, in an open van. The sunlight hits it. So, the plastic melts and mix in the water. We drink that water, it gets absorbed, it goes and sits in the receptor, it will not allow the thyroid hormone to work. So, you can put only three things on your skin. Coconut oil, olive oil, egg yolk. Because these are the three things you can swallow. You cannot swallow your lipstick, you cannot swallow the hand, hand color, nail color, nothing. Because the reason is that, you put anything in your mouth, what happens? The first pass is the liver. It goes to the liver. Liver looks at it, it's a detoxifying organ. So it filters everything. However, when you put it on the skin, it directly goes. There is no liver to give the protection. Who doesn't use cosmetics? <laughs> so these are some of the reasons. So, when you take what is uh, thyroid hormone, it is trihydrothyronine. Um, that is, you have a protein known as thyronine, tyrosine, and three iodines combined. This is a hormone, very simple terms. If you 
if you look at the periodic table, who remembers periodic table? <laughs> this is not the halide. So fluorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. See, they are all closely linked. Suppose you take chlorinated water, you inhale chlorinated water. That can be, instead of iodine, chlorine can go and Okay, that can, so chlorine and this tyrosine can combine. Fluorinated toothpaste. Brownie of bread. Bromine is used. So these are some of the things we have to have to back up. So what it all means, it is not the law of the average or rule of the average. If, if 100 people with under-functioning thyroid go to a thyroid specialist, what do you think all of them will get? Medicine. <laughs> Sir, no. Everybody is given the medicine. However, he said the way to approach. So, it's a law of the individual. It's not the law of the average. So, if 100 people come with thyroid or diabetes, they are like 100 different blocks. Each of them requires different. So, that is where personalized medicine. It is personalized, patient oriented, proactive, predictive. This is functional medicine. This is how you are. So every uh, patient who comes is a case study. It's not a number. You have to treat the individual with the disease, not the disease. They are not a number. So you have to sit, talk to them, try to find out, connect the dotted lines, put the correct key. So I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think I have done. Yeah. I wanted to be very brief. Uh, I suppose you were able to understand whatever I said. Thank you. So if you leave your email address, the entire deck will make sure it's available to you. Just Uma or somebody else leave your email address. See, our philosophy, our philosophy is wellness is well within us. We are the architect or you are the architect of your health. Okay. So you have to empower yourself because we are all disease centric, medicine centric. So that's our problem. So when you, our role is only we show you the pathway, we are only mentors. We show you the pathway. You have to train the pathway. You have to go through it. You have to empower yourself, and that way, yeah. Now, yeah. Okay, sir. Like especially during the diagnosis of diabetes, many people also lose a lot of. But uh, to all that you explained, right?